Okay guys, the big daddy of the year. The sequel to Gloomhaven, Frosthaven by Cephalofair Games. This is a one to four player game that takes 30 minutes per player, ages 13, 14 and up. And Frosthaven is, <laughs> Frosthaven is a dungeon crawler, much like the game Descent, with a lot of unique little twists and turns to it. You'll be selecting a character to be in the game, one of di six different choices. You'll be gathering their deck, the character's miniature, the character's attack deck, a character sheet that you'll be using to write down tons of information, and then your health and experience. Each of your characters is also going to have additional upgrade cards as well as tokens and uh, upgrade cards for your battle deck as well. Some characters will come with additional figures and tokens and cards that you'll utilize specifically for their class. And then their character board, which will detail where your discard goes, where your loot goes, where your items go, how much health how many cards start in your deck, and all the different various symbols in the game, as well as what your character does is very different to other characters. In the game Frosthaven, is a, I would say it's very similar to game Gloomhaven in a few ways, mainly how the game is played up to a certain point. Your objective is to go around each of the different scenarios and accomplish the mission, whether it be to simply defeat a group of bandits or to stop a siege against your fort or attempt to, I don't know, gather treasure and obtain a specific relic and fight a boss. There is a lot going on in this game. Uh, I usually do this whole thing where I talk about the intro of a game, then I go into the setup of the game, and I talk about uh, how to play the game and my review. And this is, is so dang massive that I'm going to be leaving out a lot of stuff. I'm going to be mainly covering my thoughts on the game and whether or not you should pick this up. Uh, but I will, I guess, go into the setup slash how to play, and I'll attach all of that together just to give you a sense. If you've never played uh, Frosthaven or Gloomhaven or Gloomhaven Draws of the Lion, you'll at least understand what this game is. But I'm guessing most of you already know or have a good idea of how Frosthaven is played. But for those of you who don't, right now, I'll talk about it. So yes, like I was saying, Frosthaven is a dungeon crawl, choose your own adventure, legacy style game with many, 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 many hours of content. You'll be going through these books here. These are like scenario booklets that will explain how the game goes. So this is this first scenario book, and then there's gonna be another scenario book, or it's called just called a section book. This scenario book will cover the main scenarios that you'll be partaking in. Like, I'll just talk mainly about the intro here. I don't wanna spoil anything because this game is full of spoilers, but I will show you and tell you what you get, okay? But they'll start with Howling in the Storm and how you're starting to trudge through this like dreary pass and all of a sudden a bunch of wolves pop up, right? And you always get to see what's kind of in front of you, but then out in the uh, depths of the wasteland, you won't be able to see. And that's how you'll be utilizing the second book, the second section book, to illustrate stuff that pops up as the game goes on. Now, of course, there is a rule book as well with the game that explains how to play, but I think I can give you a good overview. To begin, you'll select a character. That character is going to have a character board, as well as on the back, its complexity and its story. Uh, mainly for most of the characters, you'll have a character deck and a battle deck. When you begin the game, you're going to have all the cards from your deck in your hand. Your battle deck will be shuffled and set aside. And on your turn, you're just gonna play two cards. You'll take one card, and then you'll take another card, and you're gonna play them. Now, based on how you play them, there's going to be an initiative level. The lower means you're going first, and the higher means you're going last. So if I played a 30 and you played a 60, I'd go first and then you'd go second. And that goes double for the enemies as well. They have their own initiative. When you have these two cards down, you'll choose either the first top section or the bottom section. And whatever one you choose on one card, you have to do the opposite on another. So if I go top here, I have to go bottom here. Additionally, if I do not want to play the main card's abilities, top or bottom section, there is a neutral type of ability you can use. The top section being to fight two to an adjacent unit, and the bottom being to move two. And so I can choose to do a regular action, like move two on the bottom here, if I don't want to do this action here. And then on this side here, I can do the top full action, or I can simply attack two, and I'll utilize these cards. And what's going to happen is everybody's going to play these cards down, going to reveal them, and determine initiative. After you've done that, then you're going to set up your initiative markers, and then players are going to go based on initiative order throughout the round and play their cards out. After they play their cards out, they'll discard those cards. And those cards that are discarded are not going to come back until they're reshuffled. 
And after everybody has gone through and including the enemies, then you're simply going to rinse and repeat. And you'll keep going through your hand of cards, your main deck. And eventually what will happen is you'll have no cards left in hand or very few, and you might want to choose to rest. Now you're going to do two different types of rests. One is a short rest, which will allow you to basically continue playing the game and you won't lose a turn or lose a round, I should say. And instead of playing the, the cards for a, uh, a long rest, you would actually stop, you would heal, uh, you would be able to select the card that you're going to lose, et cetera, et cetera, and you'll be out for the round. But if you choose a short rest, you'll just simply take the discarded cards, you'll shuffle them up, and then you're going to lose a card. Now, losing is for the entire scenario. That card will just disappear up until our next scenario. So if you lose your cards, you're going to have less value in your abilities. Uh, now, cards also are a form of um, a way for you to be exhausted, okay? Uh, there's two ways that you can basically be some exhausted in this scenario, and if everyone is exha exhausted, you lose. The main way is when you run out of health. But if you don't want to lose health, you can start losing cards instead. You can negate attacks by discarding cards into your loss section. And when you have no cards, you'll become exhausted because there's nothing else that you can do for the game. And that's literally all you really need to know about how the game is played. Hand of cards, play two, determine initiative, use your top, use your bottom, and pass, and continue. Some cards will let you move, others will let you attack, some of the cards are going to give you AoE effects, uh, there's combat in the game based on the card that you're playing, there's a ton of different values and different areas in which a character can attack based on certain principles, uh, and then you'll do damage, and damage is going to be dealt with this damage deck. A damage deck is pretty simple. This deck is shuffled. You'll deal your damage, and let's say that my character has a damage of, of three, and it has a range of four, and I can hit this wolf here. I'd reveal the top card of my deck, and I would include this in the battle damage. And this is a times two, so if it was three damage, I would do six. Or it could be a negate attack, which is literally my attack does nothing. But most likely, it's going to be something like a plus zero, a minus two, a minus one, or like a plus one. And so it'll kind of change the way your attacks happen. This is kind of like a little bit of a chance deck. But this deck will get run through. And at a certain point, when one of the cards say, it says that you have to reshuffle the deck, that's when you make the deck whole again. And I think usually it's just going to be on the attack, the, the whenever your attack fails, or the times two, you'll reshuffle your attack deck. And so this is kind of a way of giving complexity to the game and thinking about what type of uh, uh, pluses and minuses that you might have. You have this little board here that determines your health. Whenever you lose health, you reduce it from here. Whenever you gain it, you'll increase it from here. And on the side is your experience. During periods of time in the game, whether it be to play a card or whenever it is like the end of a scenario, you'll get a certain amount of XP. And XP is calculated on your character board, or your character sheet, I should say, not your character board. Your character sheet is going to have your name, it's going to have your level, it'll have your experience attached to your level, how much experience you have, how much gold you have, your resources, any notes you might want to have in masteries. And these are things that you can complete through scenarios, and when you do, you'll gain the ability of these guys here, which are perks. You can also gain perks from a variety of ways. One other way is at the beginning of a scenario, re receiving a card, which is, or you're going to choose between cards and pick a card, and that card is like, an objective that you can try and meet while accomplishing the main scenario's objective. Maybe it's to defeat a unit and also take that unit's loot at the same time on the same round. Or it could be something like to defeat three units of a specific type or to defeat one of each type of unit. That's a way in which you'll be gaining perk points and eventually when you have enough of them you will get a perk and these perks will usually affect uh, your battle deck. Your battle deck being this one here, you'll be able to add slash remove cards changing this for the better. Uh, you also have this cool little uh, elemental board. There are different types of elements, fire, water, wind, etc. And certain cards will allow you to move these elements into certain areas, and other cards will let you utilize them. But remember, at the end of the round, these will all go back one space. So you're trying to gain value from these. You have rounds. There's a total of 12 rounds on this marker. It's not really super important. Usually you'll be able to finish or lose in about six or seven rounds. Depending on the scenario, there are more that take longer. Um, the different types of terrain and the boards are all going to be represented by the scenarios. You'll start on either zero or one. And like I said, Howling in the Snow is the first one, it's number zero, it's like the tutorial. You'll start with this and you'll get to go through this whole thing. You'll set the board up, illustrate where your characters go, what the enemies are, what type of enemies, and uh, 
uh, how strong they are. It has a little board here that illustrates the different amount of enemies. Could maybe have four enemies. So you have a numbers one through four. And then of course you have their attack, their speed, and their HP. And uh, another thing that's kind of cool too, which is a little different than Gloomhaven, is this little loot deck. Every scenario set up a new set of loot uh, pieces from this little loot deck. And you'll shuffle it up. And these will be the pieces that drop from the enemies. Now, I have a large amount of wood here. This is actually all fully an insert, which I'll have linked down below. But in my insert over here, I have loot tokens. These guys here, these two tokens are what drop from enemies. And there are a ton of tokens in this game that you'll be utilizing whenever needed. There's also scenario tokens. There's these little terrain pieces. Some of them you can walk over, some you can't. Some are going to be difficult terrain. Um, there's going to be doors and passageways and loot and items and all kinds of good stuff that you'll have throughout each of the different portions of scenario that as you're going through Frosthaven. Um, now, another cool thing too is when you reach certain spaces, like they're called doors, um, that's going to uh, trigger this second book here, in which you'll be able to basically see what comes next. What type of enemies? Are there any traps? Where any pieces of loot are found? Is there a boss? All, all that good stuff. And so you'll be going through that and adding new things down, and then you'll be trying to complete the scenario, whatever it may be. Um, and that's pretty much how the game goes as far as the basic gameplay. There is more to this game, and I mean much more. There is an entire advanced storyline in this game that will allow you to choose different locations or different movement paths, which you'll be using boards like, like these guys here. So if you want to start, um, you can start on a specific area and you'll be moving along. You'll be using uh, stickers actually to denote on a map Ugh, this guy here, where you start and where you want to go on your adventure. There's all kinds of things that can change the board that affect how gameplay works. This thing is massive, as you can see. And you're going to start in a very specific small space somewhere up here in, in the mountains, right here. And you'll be moving along. Uh, additionally, there is going to be your outpost of Frosthaven. This is your outpost. There's going to be raids that affect your outpost. There's going to be additional things you'll add to your outpost. Buildings, as you can probably see, there are a lot of buildings that are not fully constructed in which you'll actually be constructing. And these buildings, additionally, not only are you going to be able to construct them, but they are going to affect uh, play in some way, whether it be, um, well, it's just this one, I guess. You could be building um, or crafting or constructing or gathering herbs and making potions and whatnot. And there's all this like hidden stuff that you're going to find as you go throughout the game. Uh, here are some of the sticker boards. These are like the different types of buildings that you can get. These are not spoilers. These are, these are part of the game, but you'll be adding these to the uh, main map. Well, I guess, you know, they, they, you don't, it's not something you start off with, but you will eventually get to them where you're being able to build the outpost and defend the outpost and deal with other things throughout the game. What's also cool is as you go from scenario to scenario to scenario, new characters are going to pop out. Now, like I said, this is a beast of a game. So there are six characters you start with, but there is a plethora of characters, unique characters that you can meet along the way. And when you meet them, huh, you're going to have the opportunity to unlock them and utilize them. And you can retire your older characters and thusly choose new characters and uh, perform the game and the experience with those new guys, which is super awesome. There's everything you need in this game to make it a thrilling and exciting experience. Every, every single one of the characters has a type of miniature. All the monsters have standees. All of the different scenarios have full stories and a choose your own adventure type of a style where you're moving from one way to another. These are all the monsters in the game, which are each illustrated and they're really well done, but you'll be utilizing these as you go on. And it's very well explained through that. But that's, I mean, that's basically the idea of the game. You'll be fighting maybe more than one type of monster as you move on from the first, first scenario, the first zero frozen waste. Let's, suddenly things start getting even more crazy. Um, and then of course there are bosses as well. So I, I think I pretty much covered everything as far as the basics of the game go. But as far as you need to know, it's a dungeon crawler where you play cards, two of them, you choose a top, you choose a bottom, and you do those things, and you'll progress until either your deck runs out or you have zero life. And if everyone is exhausted, you lose, and if not, you succeed and you continue to move on. Okay, so the review portion now of Frosthaven. And uh, I, so because I was doing a review, right, I had to, uh, 
decide what I could show and what I couldn't show and how far I want I need to go in order to play this game to fully get a full grasp on it, right? Um, and so what I had to do is write a lot of things on paper. I had to avoid stickers and I set all those aside so that when I'm done with this and I want to continue playing and eventually maybe in the, in the future, I'll be able to do a, maybe one scenario in the future so people can see and I'll, I'll play it and get into a live stream or something like that. Um, but otherwise, I have everything kind of written down or it's on separate sheets. There's only a few of them. When, when I first started, I was teaching people how to play to see how it was it was to teach people how to play this specific game without them playing Gloomhaven or, and with them playing Gloomhaven. And then Callie played only Jaws of the Lion. So I let them make a little baby character sheet. So this is all that's pretty much written on in the game. Um, and everything else, I even have the stickers kind of stuff. It's like we didn't want to ruin the experience for you guys because that's the main aspect of this game in my opinion is the story the experience the different pieces that you would never assume would be part of a game this is what well, I, th I think Gloomhaven's what the number one game currently and uh, I'm gonna guess Frosthaven is gonna come right close to that as well uh, if you haven't guessed by now I am enamored with this game I I'm very 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 like excited to continue playing the game the campaign the story meeting the different characters it has if you're looking for a dungeon crawler, first and foremost, it has everything. Additionally, too, if you're a Euro player and you like min-maxing, uh, then this game has that as well. This is not going to be the type of game where you're rolling dice and attempting to just get the highest number and defeat the monster with luck. There is a little bit that's going to be based on this deck here, but everything is so fully customizable that there's it's so close to no luck um, that you're going to be pretty impressed with the tactics involved in this game. Your cards are so very, very important as well. I, I've played, they, they've sent me the main base game. I played the Gloomhaven version on the computer. And then I've played, I mean, I've played the other two games as well, which I was lying, there's a review I have as well. But then I also got the inserts. And another really cool thing that I got was this thing here. And this is by Foreteller. And what it is, is a full narration of Frosthaven. So if you want uh, to purchase something that's only like 20 bucks, you can get a full narration. And there's like four hours and 10 minutes of content. Um, there is 146 adventures here. And you can choose spoilers or not. So you can set it to no spoilers so that nobody can see this. And then you can go ahead and push whatever you're starting with. I'll, cho I'll choose the prologue so you can hear it. And it'll give you the total time and you'll push it. Your skin is thick. You always prided yourself on that. But nothing is thick enough for this. You are walking through the frozen wastes. A place far to the north where only the hard and the lost dare to travel. Of course, that's probably why they hired you. And <laughs> there you go. So th there is a ton of ways to make this game even more thematic and the elements be a lot um, uh, easier to set up and whatnot. I'll get into the positives and negatives in a few seconds here after I finish gushing. The board and the way you're able to present the board and select different ways and a kind of choose your own adventure style game, I love. The fact that you're eventually gonna get this fort here and there's gonna be kind of invasions that you'll have to deal with, excellent. The fact that you can choose different characters as you move and progress and meet these people and you can choose to get them or not. There's characters that you'll meet along the way that you will be able to uh, interact with in certain ways and then you'll see them later on in the story. The fact that when you play the game there's no way in heck you are going to see everything because you'll choose different paths. You won't fight all the same different types of monsters and if heaven forbid you were not able to play a second time around, you would be able to at least select different ways to go about the game. This is a very long game. This is a game that I would say, if you played this consecutively throughout the year, maybe once a week, you would probably not finish the game. Uh, once a week for a year. Yeah, I don't think you would. You might be able to. There's a lot going on in this game, uh, and there's so many different new elements to this comparatively to Gloomhaven. Now, if you've played Gloomhaven before, you know the basics. What I explained to you, the cards and all that kind of stuff, that's all very, very similar. Jobs of the Lion as well. It's all going to ring a close, like, you're going to know what this is. But there's a bunch of little aspects that have changed in the game as well, and I already explained a few of them, how there's certain raids that happen, and all the characters are new and unique. The setting is obviously new and unique. And the characters and bosses and how they all function is very unique. Um, but there's enough that rings true to the original game that you'll understand how to play this one. Uh, all right. 
All right, I guess we'll talk about my, my pros, I guess, and my cons. Uh, we'll start with the cons first. We'll just get those out of the way. I think for most people, when you see this game and you see how large I had to make this camera angle, you'll understand that the main problem with this game is table space. This takes up a ton of space. And with that problem comes the secondary problem of time consumption. Consumption as in placing everything down and setting it up and clearing it away and having to write your characters down each time you want to leave. You'll have these little character sheets you have to keep track of and you'll have this, hopefully you have something like this, a uh, uh, what, what I have, the little insert that will keep everything neat and tidy inside here along with everything you've progressed throughout the game. It, it can be a real slog and take a long time. And I actually, for this review, we set this up again and I, I wanted to go through a little bit of the extra stuff I still haven't covered. I didn't want to spoil too much for me, right? Because I'm only a certain far, certain length into the game. Uh, but I wanted to see what other things pop up that I did not see, right? And just to get a full experience of the game, because otherwise it would take me about a year or something like that to cover this game. And this game, I want people to have a chance to pick it up if they can. So yeah, I, I had to see it, set this on the table and I left it here for the last like three days. So I didn't even get to another review because I didn't want to set everything, put everything back in. And uh, if you get the inserts, they're wonderful. They fit everything into the box very nicely, but it's a, a slog to get these ones. If you don't want to do the wooden ones, then there are these ones here. They are not as fancy, but they are a lot easier to put together. And they fit in nicely as well. They have your like character boards, your tokens, your standees, and your modifiers. Um, and I have both inserts. And I, I, I went and selected the, the wooden one even though it took longer, it was a little bit more intricate and uh, placement's a little more challenging, but it just looks really, really cool. So there's a lot of proprietary stuff, a lot of like uh, things that people have made to make this game kind of work really well because not only with the time and the table setup, but putting stuff back in the box is, is a chore. Uh, I, you could call it an adventure in itself. Uh, and you wanna make sure everything fits so that the box closes all the way. And when you have the inserts, it makes sure it does that perfectly. Um, Secondary, secondarily, <laughs> if you are running the inserts, there's a wonderful thing called the Frost Haven Map Archive. I'm gonna like drop some of this stuff here. This is the archive because it can this with the, all the inserts in here, it cannot you know, keep going, keep going. There's so many, there's so much damn stuff in this game. Uh, this this cannot fit all the maps. So what instead you can do is have the archive, and this will illustrate the different types of terrain pieces. Man, just, just keep falling. There's so many characters. Uh, each of the different types of terrain pieces and their number numbers. So if I'm like, okay, I need like a, you know, a six piece. I can go in here and pull this guy out and bam, there you go. Um, or a four piece or whatever it might be. And you can kind of organize this and kind of like, uh, I don't know, uh, if you were like a, whatever those people are in front of office buildings that fi file things. <laughs> <laughs> the words escape me, but yeah, you could fit all that stuff in there. So that way it separates this from this and it works out really well. I have them just kind of stacked on top of each other. The, let's talk about some of the characters too, the newer characters at least. Uh, my favorite one uh, is probably gonna be the uh, Geminate. This guy has two separate decks of cards, so it functions a little differently with two separate standees. And you can select either, uh, well, you're gonna have the option of his melee and his ranged, right? And each character comes with standees as well if you prefer. And when you're when you are that active character, you'll have these cards in hand, and you'll play them, and then you'll play them. And of course, when you're playing the zero scenario, you only get these to start with. But normally, you get all the one cards, so you have a few more. Um, but you'll play these, and whenever you play certain cards, they'll have a transform symbol on them. And at the end of the round, you can then switch your character in with a new character, and that new character will come with a separate deck of cards. What's also cool about him is when your cards empty, it'll, they'll all into the same discard pile, but we'll get them all back whenever you rest or a long rest. You're not going to have to uh, select separate decks because they're so small. Um, and the character has unique form and function. It's very powerful, but it has to be very specific as to how he is set. Well, then you have characters like the Banner Spear, and the Banner Spear is pretty simple, straightforward, except for one thing. 
Banner Spear is able to create units that are able to drop down on the field and banners. And in order for you to do certain attacks, you'll have to have allies, whether it be your minions or one of your uh, allies, in order to do a specific attack on another target. Maybe it's because you're throwing your squire at some monster and hitting them. But yeah, he'll have to have a coordination of working together with other people. Um, and there's another character, well, this one here, this is called the Bone Shaper. This is what you're, uh, similar to an average kind of necromancer that drops down minions and is able to utilize those minions and move them around. They have their own health and whatnot, HP, and they can fight. Um, and then you have something like the Drifter here. And the Drifter is able to uh, do a lot of damage. You're going to be able to take cards and place them out onto the table and they will last an extended period of time because some cards will get lost as soon as you use a specific ability. Others will sit and play, and then most will just go to the discard pile. And this guy has a lot of stay and play abilities that will increase his attacks as he goes through the, as he goes through the round. And if you play them early enough, he can make good use of them, but he runs out of cards quickly. So he has to be careful with that. Uh, there are enemies and how they function are different. Some of them have their own decks and have their own functions. The bosses are all unique and interesting. Oh, there is just a lot going on in Frosthaven. So, um, yeah, th this game has high quality components. The storyline is excellent. The different features and additions to the game that just give it that extra little touch is wonderful. The map is beautiful. All the different characters are easily seen and recognized. You can paint the miniatures if you want. If you don't want to do that and you want to be able to see them easier on the board, you can use these tokens here. Like, it's just, they just provided even more than you'd actually need for this game. Um, all the different pieces of terrain, they added so many unique pieces to give each of the scenes life. They could have just done what a lot of games do and had certain, like, just like in the original Gloomhaven, they could have just done what the classic games I've seen. It's like, this is a mobile, this is a mobile terrain. These are traps. And there's like four different colors and that's all there is. But instead they made so much unique things to the game and the traps function and feel different and the train looks different and it functions differently as well and with that comes a lot of reading of the rules going back into the rule book so there's a little bit of negative to that but for the most part i will take the extra reading of rules for the benefit of additional enhanced story the feel of being in different locations at different times with different enemies and different reasons to be there and that is all wonderful I'm going to be keeping this game, obviously, this is going to get my seal of approval. I imagine most people will. As well. I would be very shocked if this game didn't do, uh, isn't widely well recepted uh, in reviews. I haven't really checked out a whole lot of content regarding this game, but I'm going to guess that this game is going to sit right up next to Gloomhaven as being similar, but different in a lot of ways, interconnected, and the sequel to it. And then, yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, I guess final thoughts is, if you haven't played Gloomhaven before, uh, Frosthaven might be slightly more challenging. There are differences. And if you have played Gloomhaven before, there's like iconography that's a little different. Um, it's, 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 it's not too bad. You're mainly gonna have to read all the rules all over again. I would just suggest just start from the beginning and read through it just in case you miss something. Um, and finally, if you haven't played a game like this and you like this idea, but it seems a bit much, Try Jaws of the Lion first. Get that, understand that. It's a smaller box game, but it has the same feel of this um, with a little bit more simplicity around it and straightforwardness and, and like go through that and, and play that. And that's an excellent game as well. And then you can jump into this. You don't also really need to play Gloomhaven to play Frosthaven. If you want, you can, but remember these are big, big games. You should select the one that you like the best. I would suggest based on the theme of the two different games. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. There is so much wonderment in this game. I will be playing this for a long, long time. When will I finish this? I have no idea, to be honest. And I think most people will get like that. If you're expecting to finish this game when you buy it, prepare to be surprised because what you're getting is not just an experience, not just a game, but like you're getting the, you're getting a long range of time of fun and enjoyment and excitement. And I don't know what the price tag on this game is, but I would think it'd be well worth it because this is like watching a bajillion movies. Pick up Frosthaven. It's, it's really, really good. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Frosthaven by Cephal Fair Games. You can also go ahead and uh, check out this game. There's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it up. If you want, you can also head over to the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kickstart lists, and more. 
thank you guys for the inserts. Uh, you have the choice if you'd like to look and you're interested in buying this game at either these foam ones, or if you'd like, you can check out the wooden ones here. I'll have a link for both of those. And of course, if you want, you can have the narration. If you're not as good as I am at uh, being a narrator, <clears throat> tiny hooks, then you can go ahead and pick up that as well. And that's fairly cheap and you can have a whole experience. So there'll be links for all of those things, Fortel and the inserts and of course the game. If you've watched more than one of our videos here and you do appreciate the content, you think it's well worth checking out, then I suggest you give us a subscribe uh, and I uh, would appreciate it. If you think we've earned it and done a good enough job, then yeah, do do so. And we'll be making new content. We make new content usually Monday through Friday and then we have a live stream on Sundays. Uh, Wednesday night is whatnot, 6.30 p.m. PST where we sell games and talk about games and play games. And then Sunday night is on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And I'm gonna be looking forward to playing a lot more Frosthaven with my friends next time.